Hi there, Pete here. Hope everyone is well. Back again, helping to dispel some of the nonsense in the world. In this video, we'll be looking at the nonsense surrounding MPs with regard to the phrase, they work for you, you being the electorate. Now here in the UK, it is widely held that a member of parliament or politician represents or works on behalf of their constituents. And here's some MPs talking about their role. The role of an MP is not just to represent constituents, but to split your time between being in the constituency and in Westminster. In Westminster, you take part in debates, ask questions of ministers, help to scrutinise legislation and vote for legislation or against it if you don't support it. An MP's got two jobs. In your local area, the MP's meant to fix your local problems. So if your school's all messed up and the electricity goes and you can't get it fixed, we're the people who are meant to sort out the problem. Down in Parliament, we actually make laws. So we decide uh, how much money a school maybe gets. We decide what you get taught in school. So in a funny kind of way, what we do here affects everyone from 8 to 80. So, do they have to vote as well? Like we do, with booths and crosses. I bet they've got cyber laser voting. Uh, um, uh, actually, they, they walk into rooms. Uh, one for yes, one for no. And they're counted as they walk back into the commons. <laughs> it's not very technological, but it's been that way for hundreds of years, and it seems to work. Much as I would like to be able to press a button yes or no, at the end of the day, I'd rather vote in person. And the big benefit to me for voting is that I will go into a lobby and there will be other members of parliament there voting alongside with me. The eyes to the right were 364. The nose to the left, 21. If you're on the government side, you'll have government ministers voting alongside you as well. And so you've got a fantastic opportunity for MPs to influence either ministers or indeed shadow ministers as to where uh, policies are wrong or changes that you want to see happen. The eyes have it. Unlock. This idea is reflected on the website theyworkforyou.com where it states, your politicians represent you. And here's a woman appearing on Question Time disparagingly echoing the same sentiments. The woman there in the third again. row from the back. I just wonder whether you think we're all ignorant and whether you really think that little of us that you just can't answer questions. We have a right to answer. You just saw it tonight. We saw it tonight. Teflon Dave, nothing, you know, nothing sticks. He doesn't actually answer anything despite constant questions. Ed Balls, you're just as bad. You constantly say, I hear you, but, or however. Oh. Just answer the questions because you're just making a mockery of the whole system. What about him? Well, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair I have to say, my overriding kind of opinion of tonight and the debate was that what we saw was we were so busy focusing on David Cameron and Gordon Brown bickering at each other that suddenly there's Nick Clegg in the middle and we forget to actually put him under as much scrutiny as the other two. Well, and what is it, sorry, since you're so passionate about it, what is it you feel you're not being told? The whole lot, basically. I mean, we've asked directly, you know, where are the, where's the rest of this money coming from? Will you have a, an increase in VAT? And you can't get a straight answer. It's, it's mm. as though you're treating us like we're ignorant. And at, you work for us. We pay for you. You're here to represent us. But my question to you is, does an MP actually work for their constituents? Do they really work for you? Well, to help us answer this question, we firstly have to understand the structure of governance within the UK. Now, everybody should know that here in the UK, we have a monarch, this being Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who is the head of state. One way we can ascertain her role as head of state is by looking at the monarch's coronation oath she affirmed way back in 1953. 
The Archbishop next administers the coronation oath. Will you solemnly promise and swear to govern the people of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Union of South Africa, Pakistan, and Ceylon, and of your possession and the other territories to any of them belonging or pertaining according to their respective laws and customs. I solemnly promise so to do. Now it's clear that Queen Elizabeth II has sole governance over the people within the realms of the kingdom. And if you were monarch, would you really want to be directly involved in the day-to-day running of the kingdom? No, you wouldn't. You'd much rather want to be basket weaving, gardening, attending parties, or perhaps even meeting well-known celebs and paedophiles. And this is the sole reason why we have the Houses of Parliament. After all, it is his or her majesty's government. Now, some of you might disagree and still think that Parliament has the overall responsibility of governing the country. But let's have a quick look at the Queen's state opening address of Parliament this year. My Lords and Members of the House of Commons, my government will legislate in the interests of everyone in our country. It will adopt a one nation approach, helping work- working people get on, supporting aspiration, giving new opportunities the most, to the most disadvantaged, and bringing different parts of our country together. My government will continue with its long term plan to provide economic stability and security at every stage of life. They will continue the work of bringing the public finances under control and reducing the deficit, so Britain lives within its means. Measures will be introduced to raise the productive potential of the economy and increase living standards. Legislation will be brought forward to help achieve full employment and provide more people with the security of a job. New duties will require my ministers to report annually on job creation and apprenticeships. Measures will also be introduced to reduce regulation on small businesses so they can create jobs. Legislation will be brought forward to ensure people working 30 hours a week on the national minimum wage do not pay income tax and to ensure there are no rises in income tax rates, value-added tax, or national insurance for the next five years. Measures will be brought forward to help working people by greatly increasing the provision of free childcare. Legislation will be introduced to support home ownership and give housing association tenants the chance to own their own home. Measures will be introduced to increase energy security and to control immigration. My government will bring forward legislation to reform trade unions and to protect essential public services against strikes. To give new opportunities to the most disadvantaged, my government will expand the Troubled Families Programme and continue to reform welfare with legislation encouraging employment by capping benefits and requiring young people to earn or learn. Now from the clip we saw, can anyone guess what word referring to ownership stands out the most? Yes, you got it. It was the word my. In fact, the word my appeared within Liz's speech numerous times and according to the content of the speech, not only is it her government, all of the lords and ministers present are hers too. So with all this information, it certainly is the case the monarch governs the people of the realms through her parliament. Still not convinced? Well, let's ask the question 
who actually pays MP salaries. Although many might think it is the UK taxpayer, they would be wrong, as it is in fact HM government. MPs are in fact employees. And to help us understand this, here's Liz with a definition of the word employee. An individual who works part-time or full-time under a contract of employment, whether oral or written, express or implied, and has recognized rights and duties. Also called worker. But you're still reluctant to give in, aren't you? Well, to drive home the final nail in the coffin, let's have a look at the oath or affirmation a newly elected MP has to swear in order to take up office. Welcome back. You know the drill, don't you? Uh, yes. You want to swear? Yes. Confirm. I swear. Bernard Jenkin, Harwich and North Essex. I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. Thank you. Even though know the next stage is signing the test law. So, Gerald, welcome back. Thank you very much indeed. Now, what, what, which of this interesting selection... I'd like an Old Testament, please. <coughs> I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. Now, if anybody was observant during the clip, there was no mention of MPs' constituents whatsoever in the oath or affirmation. It seems the loyalty of an MP lies more with Her Majesty and her heirs and successors rather than any constituency member or member of the public who elected them. So it's nonsense to ever think MPs represent or even work on behalf of their constituents, as all they are, are employees of Her Majesty's government. Well, there you go. So the next time you're at the polling station, always remember, you're not electing anyone to work for you, you're really helping to select someone to work for Her Majesty. So till next time, always remember, if something doesn't make sense, it's nonsense.